Hello and welcome back to Planet Neighbor. Today we are going to be talking about something completely different. For the last nine months or so, I have been following the saga of the Hemonculus. These creatures are created by a home alchemist who basically does DNA testing in his basement. He creates these creatures by making a small opening in the egg and injecting sperm into it. He then seals it for about 40 days, and when he opens it, he gets a little creature that comes from the DNA splice. Today we will talk about this and what it means socially, scientifically, and how it relates to some of the subjects that we normally talk about. So, we'll start at the beginning. About nine months or so ago, I was researching home alchemy, and in the course of that, I found some video from a guy who was a home alchemist and who had been having some results from his alchemy. Now, if you've ever investigated alchemy or tried it yourself, you'll know that finding any proof or results is a pretty hard thing to do. There are many people who claim that they have done this or that, but proof is fleeting at best. I have never seen a well-documented video for anything related to alchemy, so you can imagine my joy at not only finding proof in the well-documented video of the end result, but also the entire process laid bare on video for us. Although he and I were trying to do very different things with alchemy that were pretty much at the opposite ends of the spectrum, at least I know that someone out there is getting some results. As it turns out, he was doing basic genetic alchemy, splicing the human gene with that of a chicken. So he wasn't exactly turning lead into gold, but it was still darn interesting nonetheless. So I watched as he created some of these things. Many folks said he would not be able to do it, and the first couple were stillborn, and he just tossed them out. But by the third time, he had one that was alive and moving. The third one was short-lived though because it spit some kind of fluid out at him which he called poison and then he smashed it on the table. Billiards. Ну теперь он точно мёртв. Его так сильно раздавил, что боюсь. Невозможно понять. He just smashed it to jelly on the table. Although many people said he would have never been able to keep it alive anyway, that didn't stop him. Fast forward 40 days, this time he has one and he doesn't kill it. But he puts it in a glass jar and starts trying to feed it. Eventually, he figures out how to feed it with a protein mix that it absorbs through its skin. Over time, it evolves into a much larger creature that has a mouth and sucks food in as he drops it in the jar. He studies the hemonculus and finds that he gets a small reading of electrical activity from it. He then decides to make another one. The second one has a totally different body, more like that of a blobby starfish than the first upright plant-like monster that we see in the first video. He would need names to distinguish them apart, so he named the first one, the taller one, Pikachu, and the second one, Slowpoke, since it's basically a blob and moves like a starfish. Unlike Pikachu, the taller one with the mouth and tongue, Slowpoke has no opening, so it absorbs all of its food through the skin, as Pikachu did until its mouth formed and opened. Slowpoke never did develop a mouth, but after a few months, he did grow an eye. Now, you can see as the eye follows the alchemist as he's talking, and then as he moves his hand near the jar, it actually moves and follows his hand. I was totally amazed when I saw this. An eye is a highly advanced feature that is very far removed from the blob-like starfish shape that we see in the bottom of the jar here. So this is a real breakthrough. The alchemist then decides to put both of the animals in an aquarium together to study their social behavior, and things really start to get interesting. 
As I watched, I would often wonder what the social impact was of what he was doing. Was it morally or ethically wrong to create these creatures? While scientifically, we cannot study the unknown without crossing some lines. But can we say the same thing socially? I also wondered at the feedback he got and how it was so very much like that that we find in our own forums here. People trying so hard to debunk every little thing that we say and making very silly and base arguments that expose the fact that they have no idea what they are talking about, yet they say it like it is scientific law. He too was confounded by this. He simply asks, where are your experiments? What did you find when you tried it? And of course, the answer is silence because none of them have tried any of it. They just shout out catchphrases and buzzwords because that is all that they have. He comes to an interesting conclusion. That they are engaging in self-deception in order to keep their world view of the outside world intact. They are going against everything that has been shown to them, they are denying what is in front of their very eyes to stay in their little sheltered bubble. Each time one of these creatures grows or displays a new behavior, it proves the naysayers wrong. The creatures are not alike and do not behave in any traditional manner that is known to him nor to me. Their behavior sometimes proves the alchemist wrong on his assumptions as well. And that just goes to show that we are all learning things as we go, and at least some of us are open-minded enough to see and recognize these things for what they are. We are very lucky to be so inquisitive and open-minded. Many people believe that if it's not taught in school, it couldn't possibly be real. And if it's not on television, it couldn't possibly exist. This is the same crowd that believes every single thing that they see on television. They won't question the news, they won't question the government because they would never lie. I find this silly, but if we employ due diligence, we will one day have all the facts, and then the naysayers will have to come along too. So that's the story on the homunculus, and if you want to hear more about it, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. Thank you guys for watching, and thank you for being so very awesome. All of your comments, likes, and subscriptions are very much appreciated. I truly enjoy interacting with you guys and making these videos. It's great to find an entire community of people who think similar and enjoy the same subject. So thank you guys for everything you do, and we will be back with another video very soon.